Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode four of This Korean Life, coming to you from Ulsan City. Uh, today's podcast is brought to you by Language Lab. Language Lab is Ulsan's premier place for learning a foreign language. Are you interested in learning a new language, or do you need to pass a language test? Language Lab offers courses in a variety of languages, including Japanese, English, Spanish, Chinese, and many others. The small classes, professional instructors, and affordable prices make this an ideal place to learn. This podcast is also brought to you by Street Taco, located in Samsandong. Uh, Street Taco offers a variety of Mexican dishes in a wide selection of both alcoholic and non-alcoholic beverages. The friendly owners and cozy atmosphere make this a great spot for dinner with friends or a date. Check them out on Facebook or Instagram. Ladies and gentlemen, today's podcast features Stacy Fells. She's a mother, a teacher, and a businesswoman. She gives um, an expat woman's perspective on living in Korea. We had a great time talking to her. She has lots of uh, lots of wonderful stories and uh, and thoughts to uh, to share. A very powerful Canadian Ajima. Uh, I hope you guys enjoy. You are now tuned into This Korean Life with your hosts, Brian and Nate. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to This Korean Life. Uh, I'm here with Nate. Nate, say hello. hello. And today's guest is Stacy Fells. Stacy, welcome. Thank Hi. you for having me. How you doing? Doing great. Good. I'm glad. Uh, I'm glad today. Uh, I'm glad we actually got to uh, to have the podcast today. Stacy just came back from uh, picking up her sick daughter from school. We almost had to, <laughs> almost had to cancel, but grandma grandma pulled through and and uh, and kept this uh, kept the dream alive. Hooray for Korean grandmas. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> Anyways, what uh, Stacy house things? I'm doing good. I'm on doctor's orders not to talk, though, so this should be interesting. <laughs> they, they, they got you for... If my, vo- if my voice cuts out, you know the reason why. Mm. They, they got you for a one plus one? Went in for the daughter, you guys both left with medicine? Right. Yeah? Three days worth. <laughs> Wonderful. So if you don't know how uh, how this works, we have... Uh, <clears throat> we'll have a, a nice conversation. We have some uh, some talking points that we've that we've discussed earlier. We have two segments. One is uh, stories from the sauna. Second one will be, uh, did you know that or did you know this? I don't know. It's a segment that I butcher every, <laughs> that I butcher every episode and likely will do today. So look forward to that at somewhere, uh, somewhere in this conversation. But, uh, just to, just to start off, how long, uh, how long have you been in uh, Korea now? Uh, I came in November of 1997. 19, I, I did. Wow. <laughs> 19, <laughs> 19, that was a long time ago. So, I didn't ask for a math test, but that's, <laughs> what, that's 22, 22 years? years. This, this November, 22 years. 22 years. Why Why Korea? What's the, uh, what, what was the, the initial attraction? 97? 97. I didn't know Korea before 2002. <laughs> when they beat Italy in the World Cup, we, we had skipped school to, um, to go watch the game. And right. it was terribly officiated, but they beat Italy. And after I remember looking, like, what what is South Korea? What is, and we're looking on the map, we're like that's little country they beat Italy. It was it was pure outrage, and that was in two thousand two. Right. You were living and working here five years yeah, earlier. We, what was the? Um, we were at those games here hmm. at the stadium. Oh. We didn't have tickets, of course, because they were too expensive. But yeah. they had um, big. Um, screens set up outside the stadium for everybody to come and watch. So mm. everybody dressed in red. We had face paint mm. um, because we were foreigners. You know, our faces were plastered all over the the local newspapers. You know, for supporting you know yeah. the, the Korean teams. And awesome. um, years later, I had found out that one of those pictures was on a tour around Korea. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> faces in there somewhere. No, I. Um, I graduated from Teachers College in '97 and had some friends who had graduated the year prior come to Korea mm. and kind of, you know, like uh, say, like, "Oh, it's a nice place. You know, you can pay off your student loans. You mm. know, it seems pretty nice. You should come." Yeah. And um, yeah, so I you just, came on a recommendation from it, from friends. Was it popular back then? Or I, I mean, think, I came 2000. 
four. And I mean, 97, I was, <laughs> I was still in high school then. So I was grade six. I mean, I, like you said, <laughs> I, don't even think, you're I don't even think I would have thought of Korea yet. I was, I was too encompassed in hockey and, and didn't think about much else. But I mean, when I came, it was a very trendy, very popular thing. And those are the kind of things we talked about paying off student loans or right. a place to make money, travel. But was it like that in 97? What was so the, what were the fares like? Cost of living? Uh, in 97, um, at the time, this was before the financial crisis. You know. Salaries were the same as they are today. Uh, well, <laughs> Close. This is, I, I, came, I came, I think, a month, maybe a month or so before the financial crisis that they call IMF uh. here um, happened and kind of basically cut my salary in half. Really? If, if I, you know, my salary was still the same, but if I was sending money to Canada, oh, yeah, absolutely, the exchange yeah. rate went like, phew, through the roof. Mm. So... No, at the time, I didn't have a passport. I was um, staying at my grandmother's house for the summer, just working my summer job. And there weren't a lot of teaching jobs available at the time in Nova Scotia. So, um, yeah, I just, on a whim, I went to the library because I didn't have a computer. Went to the library, looked up teaching English in Korea. On, um, On AOL? I don't remember at the time something like that. And I found um, a recruiter out of like Toronto and I filled out a little bit of their questionnaire as much as I could. Mm. And, you know, by the time I left the library and went back to my grandmother's house, she said, somebody from Korea called you. And I was like, what? what's going on? Jesus. And so, you know, the recruiter called me back and said, there's plenty of jobs, you know, get your paperwork in order and we'll mm. keep in contact and we'll you know, set you up. It's a good feeling. Right. It was, it was, you never feel so wanted until you apply for English jobs abroad, (laughs) you know, and then, um, so they were really super nice. And, you know, she said, since you're from a small town, we wouldn't recommend you go to Seoul because, you know, you're going to have this big, you know, culture shock on top of culture shock. So she said, I recommend Ulsan, you know, small, small small town, Ulsan, (laughs) small city, small city of a million, you know, so, um, yeah, so she set me up with my first ever job here, and awesome. Did you ever just contemplate to... somewhere else in Canada, or I just wonder if back then if that was no. I think um, I a um, bunch of my friends had decided that they were also going to go abroad. So I had two friends go to England to teach English, and I thought, well, that's not <laughs> much of a, <laughs> that's not much of an adventure. I had one friend that went to Japan. Because her boyfriend at the time had graduated a year prior and he was already there waiting for her. So Mm. she was already on the next plane out. And a couple friends had gone to Korea and they liked it. So, um, you know, I thought, okay, well, I'm not going to follow her to Japan. You know, I might as well go to Korea. And maybe that's different being from the East Coast as opposed to Ontario or BC or somewhere that you could go to different cities and towns and find lots of jobs. The uh, I know Japan was definitely a lot more developed or, or... more quickly that was, that was the Korea because the jet program was a government sponsored program that was mm. available a lot longer before Korea was ever organized in those regards. Right, that might have been what she she did go through some programs. She had a lot of um, hoops to jump through before she actually mm. got the okay to go. But she was, you know, basically we graduated and she was on the next plane out. Hmm. So well, she didn't, you know, waste any time. I remember when I was looking and that was before she's Jap- still there too. Japan had any kind of free and open teaching jobs and it was only the the jet program and it was run by the government and there was a lot of hoops and a lot of complications to, to get, you know, right. approved she had to, to go, go through, through that. Different testing and di- different. I don't. And Korea was whole. very, very easy in mm-hmm. comparison. So. Right, we had to, you know, just submit your documents at the time, which really didn't require f- anything more of than you know your passport <laughs> and you picture know, of your passport, face, passport, photo, <laughs> and. Did you need a you degree? Know, uh, you needed a degree. Yeah, yeah, you did need that. You needed to show your transcripts and a degree, hmm. but no FBI background yeah. checks. Or well, even when like I that. I came in two thousand seven, there was I just showed up. I had my diploma, and they sent me to sent me to Japan. Mm-hmm. Just got the got the stamp of approval upon a five minute interview, and right. was off to Japan a few days later. Awesome, awesome. And then fast forward, fast forward five years, your face is on a your face is on a bus traveling around. Uh, well, you said you had the picture taken there. Hey, no, didn't then you then say you got from, from, from the World, the World Cup. Cup? It was a traveling art exhibition ah. that was like um, in Hyundai Department <laughs> Store. <laughs> oh, nice. And, you know, one of my friends went and was like, hey, you know, your picture is in Hyundai Department Store mm-hmm. in the art gallery. And I was like, what are you talking about? And uh, she's what? like, yeah, there's a traveling exhibition like 
<laughs> you know, remembering the World Cup or something. And I was like, oh, well, that's, Listen, that's nice. When you, <laughs> when you said that, that reminds me of the, of the one girl, the one teacher that was here who was uh, an animal rights activist or part of PETA. And she was, she was pro. Oh, the whale. She, she ended up being on the, the pamphlet for the, the, for the whale, whale festival, festival, right? Yeah. <laughs> for those, for those, yeah, for those, a few years ago. for those listening that don't, uh, that don't know what we're talking about. She, she was a, an activist for, for PETA and she had, what was it? It was a dolphin, a dolphin hat, or uh, a like rubber that. dolphin hat. Yeah. That she was protesting with, you know, save the dolphins, don't keep them in captivity. And, you know, I don't know. Ulsan City somehow got got a hold of this uh, hold of this picture, and she was kind of the the poster girl for the for the <laughs> Ulsan Whale Festival for a few years for a few years running, which is kind of ironic. And I bet she wouldn't be too happy if she if she saw that. <laughs> you mentioned the IMF financial crisis and uh, the World Cup. What were some of the big events or big changes or differences or or things that you noticed during those times, or did you? Because Korea changes really, really fast. I can't imagine what this city was like or the other cities that hosted uh, were like prior to the World Cup. Right. So there weren't a lot of foreigners around at the time. So there was a big, um, you know, each of the uh, hosting cities, they were really working on trying to have like public awareness of the influx of foreigners coming in Mm. and how to, you know, help them, you know, enjoy their time here. So I was called by a couple different radio, not not radio, what, television programs to do some programming for them leading Mm. up to the World Cup. So one, um, I had to go to a temple and attend a temple stay. And another one was I had to pretend I couldn't speak Korean and uh, (laughs) ask people how to find the park in Busan and see if they helped me. So it was kind of like a hidden camera experiment. But um, Did you post one of those online? And then uh, I don't think this is before we had really like online. I mean, these were I, I have the videos somewhere. But I thought I remember like, <laughs> seeing you in a couple of videos from a long time ago on Facebook or something. Not, Maybe not I mean, too I long a, ago. I did a few TV shows. It's throwback Thursday, day. right? Something like that. <laughs> something like that. But um, yeah. So when I first came, meeting another foreigner on the street was like you know like wow. You you stop and you talk like hi. How are you? Where are you from? Mm. Um, the the grandmas around the neighborhood would stop me and like want to touch my nose and, and, <laughs> and like commented on my white skin, you know. So we were few and far between. So there was a big campaign um, happening don't, across the country, you know, don't to touch try the to, foreigners, you know, to welcome, <laughs> welcome the foreigners coming in. So um, yeah, it was a really fun time to be in Korea when the World Cup was here. I yeah. mean, there was activities going on. There were lots of. Um, you know, everybody on the street, you know, were they were just happy and excited. Mm. And, no, no. you know, you had random people coming up to you and, you know, screaming like, Day, and, uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, cheering for the teams and people were wearing red almost every day. No doubt. Cool. So, yeah, it's pretty exciting. What about the financial crisis? Ah, the financial crisis. So when I first got here, um, I had been promised by my recruiter to have my own apartment or a shared apartment with you know, possibly another uh, another teacher. When I got here, um, my bosses brought me to live with them. So, <laughs> um, they already Gotta had keep another tabs teacher. On this. They had another teacher. Her name was Penny. I don't recall her last name at the time. I think a lot of us at that time, we just went by first names. And uh, so Penny lived with us. She had the spare bedroom in the apartment. And she was sending money back home regularly because she owned a house Mm. at home. So she was paying off her mortgage. And she had to leave when the financial crisis hit because she didn't have enough money to send back. She still had her same salary, but it was basically like... It was worthless at home. So she had to leave. So when she left, I got her bedroom. And I didn't have to sleep in the daughter's bedroom anymore. Oh, nice. So the daughter, they had kicked out and she was sleeping (laughs) on the floor in the parents' bedroom. And uh, we finally... A little while later, we found another teacher to replace Penny. Mm. So uh, the new teacher was also promised that she'd be going to, you know, uh, her own apartment. And they brought her to our house. Happy family. And so she had the daughter's bedroom. And um, yeah, so IMF, we every, everybody kind of, um, those who could stay, stayed. And at the time, I think I was still... I think I might have had a six-month grace period before I had to start paying back my student loans. Beautiful. So yeah. at the time, 
Um, it really didn't affect me. I didn't have to send much money home. Mm. Um, but I think at the time, if I do recall, my salary was maybe one point three million, mm. which at the time was maybe a six hundred one to the, one Canadian the dollar. One here, yeah. And then later it was like boom, twelve hundred. Yeah, 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 double. So, yeah. Uh, 1200 1300 yeah um when i came 2007 was i think it was at par i think it was at par and then it went up lots and now right. it's down again but mm -hmm. the did did you notice anything i mean i've heard lots of stories i've watched some documentaries i've read some books did you notice any of the uh well changes in the koreans i mean i know a ton of people lost their jobs lots of people had over invested money um did you notice anything in that regard? I think the biggest thing, you know, since back in that time, we really didn't have a lot of connections. You kind of went to work and then came home and maybe you met with other foreigners on the weekend. Mm. Um, uh, something that should be mentioned, Ulsan had one internet cafe at the time when I came. There was <laughs> I know. actually one yeah. internet cafe. So people would meet there on the weekends, check their email, send messages home to their family. <laughs> this is before, you know, it's I wild, had a beeper. Eh? You know, we didn't have yeah. cell phones. Yeah. Wow. Um, we didn't even have like regular cell phones. We had beepers. Wow. And so, you know, we didn't have the connection Network, to the yeah. outside world, you know. Because wow. I think we, if that ever happened these days, I mean, right. everybody I know would be affected. So the biggest thing that I remember from that time is everywhere you went, people were encouraged to sell their gold. Huh. The Koreans, um, you know, usually traditional gifts for baby's birthdays mm, or different right. special occasions worth was to give gold mm. and they wanted to you know boost the economy by selling off all their gold and you know trying I, to I heard that balance, before yeah, yeah that's wild things out oh, so a wild. lot of people were encouraged to like sell their gold what did you what did you tell uh, your family when i mean when you would call home or send an email like hey how's things over there were you were you totally transparent like man they got me sleeping on the floor or was it <laughs> no, I, think, I, I actually had a bed in the yeah. daughter's bedroom they um it was a nice enough nice enough bedroom they just you know at the time um i didn't really realize you know i thought it was this big thing that the daughter was sleeping on the parents floor you know because we come from a culture where you usually sleep in beds mm. and for them you know for the daughter to be sleeping on the floor was you know a really kind of sacrificing for you shock, yeah. shock to me so she would have to come in every once in a while to get things out of her room and it was just kind of like you know <laughs> total, totally weird so when we got the new teacher um and i had my own bedroom and then the teacher had the other room we kind of um, you know, finally mustered up the guts to say like, hey, you know, if you don't give us our own apartment, like it's stated in our contract, you know, we're going back to Canada. Mm. So uh, we finally did get a little place, but um, that's a whole other story awesome. as to so what this place looked like. Do you think that was directly related to the financial crisis or, I mean, there's a lot of shady and dodgy recruiters and agencies still these days, years and years later that are... Sometimes deceitful, sometimes, you know, over-promising all kinds of things. I think it was just a money-saving tactic for right. the family. I mean, they were, um, it was a small family. It was a husband and wife team. They had a daughter who was maybe grade five or six at the time. Mm. And um, the building where our hagwon was, we had English on one floor. And it was basically me and the other teacher. Um, they didn't have any Korean English teachers, mm. um, just us. And there was a, a room off to the side that was their little kindergarten area. And then uh -huh. upstairs, the husband, um, he had a math academy. So he taught math. And so I think it was just, you know, saving, you know, yeah. as long as they could get away with it, they were going to be saving sure. money. What are you going to write a bad, so gonna write a had, bad report on you know, Facebook? They had Penny and she was a bit older at the time. And, um, you know, she was content to like live there with them. And then, mm. you know, they brought me and I was like, okay. I'm, they feed you too? Um, that's another story too. I remember, um, <laughs> one of their, um, she was grandma. So either the husband's mother or the wife's mother, I'm mm. not sure, um, who she would make a spicy bean sprout soup and rice every day. So mm. that was always in the kitchen, but you know, I was new to Korea. I didn't know, you know, food, like no, you know, yeah, I had yeah. to try to feed myself mm. and I like, this is their kitchen. Yeah. Their fridge. I didn't feel like I could, you know, buy my own groceries. So I bought a lot of pre-cooked rice and those little, um, 
the little pre-cooked hep, hep bun, hep bun yeah. and then the little uh, what do you call them like the tangsu wangja so it's kind of like sweet and sour meatballs oh, okay, okay. or the the instant food yeah. Yeah, you know yeah. the curry that's already cooked sure. in the packages yeah, yeah. i remember trying to find <laughs> uh, trying to find mayonnaise and not realizing that the mayonnaise came in the squeeze bottles, yeah. you know. Yeah. And uh, finally, oh yeah, finally, yeah, uh, I just realized that. Yeah, yeah it came in squeeze bottles. So <laughs> we just had a small. Little, this is before we had no home plus in Ulsan. No, no home plus delivery. No home plus. No. How can you live? Like, no big supermarkets. The sure. biggest one was Mega Mart, mm. and you know where Mega Mart is. Way out you there, have yeah. to take, you know, you have to take a a bus or a couple buses to get mm. there. So I finally Wild. found like um, cheese and bread and ham. You know, there's a drive to ham Daegu, and cheese sandwiches. Daegu so, Costco. <laughs> um, I finally found milk that was palatable. Mm, so, nice. you know. And that's what we say. The guys milk. that come these days, they have no idea. I mean, I thought I went through some rough times. Probably not as rough as yours, but. Right. We didn't know what to eat. We didn't know, you know, like everything kind of tasted different. Even the cheese and, cheese cheese and jam sandwiches. Right, right. <laughs> Definitely oh. mayonnaise out of the squeeze bottle was different. Right. Fantastic. A lot of things didn't have English labels on it too. I mean, you kind of had to guess what things were. Mm, sure. So what? Uh, so you you started off in a hagwon. Was there uh, availability for privates? Was it uh, more, back in the day with less foreigners? Were people approaching you on this? I mean, when I first came here, I had people walk up to me on the street and mm-hmm. like, "Oh, excuse me, can you work at a college tomorrow? Can you do a, right, right. a, a gig here? Was it like that back in the day? Or I think my first private class that I remember having was for a plastic surgeon. I was teaching his daughter mm. and um, I can't remember exactly. I think maybe a friend had introduced me to them. I don't mm. really recall how I you know, came minute. to meet the family. But um, he's still, his office is still in Samsundong. Mm. A couple of years ago, I actually like ran into him by chance. Mm. And now I haven't seen that family for like, I met them my first year here. So 22 mm. years ago. <laughs> he looks exactly the same. Random, just random. <laughs> I remember um, maybe, maybe 10 years ago, I get mm. a call from uh, my private, another private student's mom, my, my private student mm. at the time. She calls and she says, Stacy, we're at, um, we're having a dinner with mm. different um, doctors in the area. Kind mm. of the doctors have like a monthly meetup or something. And she said, there's somebody here that wants to say hello to you. Mm. And um, so lo and behold, she hands the phone over to this, uh, the, the, uh, the student yeah. of mine. And, um, you know, I still remembered her name uh, because it was, she had a name that was a two part Korean name. Okay. So you Four, know, usually, very unique. usually you have like a three-part name, like Kim Min. Oh, okay. Like yeah, that, yeah, right? yeah, so yeah, her yeah. name was two syllables. I, sh- I shouldn't say yeah, it yeah, here, yeah. but you know, two syllables. Dang, dang. Yeah. Right. And um, so she's like, yeah, you know, her dad is part of our, you know, monthly group. Yeah. group. And so I got to talk to her. She was in Harvard at the time. Jeez, she really? wanted to say, you know, thanks for helping her learn English all those years ago mm. wow. and blah, blah, blah. So and if you're really looking sweet, for, right? if you want to send your kids to Harvard, right, Stacy right. can be reset. Uh. <laughs> really sweet. And so I got to talk to her on the phone and she was surprised that I remembered her name. And I mm. said, well, of course, you know, I remember your name. It was unique to me at the time. So yeah. I remembered everybody's name and her family. And um, then a few years after that, I was in, do you remember the old latte where they had the uh, the jungle in the basement that was kind of, was that before your time? Yes. Latte Latte Hotel mm-hmm. had a kind of cabaret section. So you could come and you could, off wow. their lobby, they had a big, like, basement section with high ceilings. and. Oh, yes, yes, had, definitely. Yeah, yeah, it was, definitely, it was called like, remember, The Jungle yes. or something like that. So we were standing there one day watching the performance. And from behind, I heard somebody say, Stacy? And so I turn around, and it's Dr. Yang, the... Um, yeah, the, the plastic, plastic surgeon. surgeon. And um, I was like, well, how did you, you know, I was back too. How did you recognize me? And he said, well, you know, I'm, you know, I'm a doctor and, you know, my, I specialize in the, the body, you yeah, know, yeah. and I, <laughs> I knew your body shape, but I was like, what? <laughs> so, okay. Have a good so, night. Yeah, it, was, it was funny. So Tie I your jacket see, around I, your waist. I had to see him away. and his wife. Um, <laughs> And they met, uh, I think I only had Maya at the time, so they met my daughter. And it was just funny because, you know, Ulsan, you know, being a city of a million, it still is quite small sometimes. You yeah, run into sure. People, it is funny. You run into people all the time. So um, I just remember one thing that Dr. Yang had told me. We were talking about what the most 
popular plastic surgery was at the time. Oh, and can I guess? No, you can try to guess. Uh, You'll never guess. You'll never guess. Oh, I'll go double eyelid surgery, no? No, no for the, well, She says that. you'll never guess. No, you're you're never, not going to pick that. You'll never guess, right? No, oh, I've... <laughs> go ahead. Yeah, it was laser tattoo removal. Really? Laser tattoo removal. Huh. And he had said most of his clients were women who had been tattooed by their former lovers. Wow. And, you know, were ready to, you know... Um, Right, we're ready to just leave that person for whatever reason, or, or you know, and just really? didn't didn't want to have How, tattoos I would... anymore. And this was like 22 years ago. We don't see people with tattoos. I'm going to have to start days. asking around to find right. out who these people were. Yeah, yeah. I wonder if my wife had a tattoo. Right. Right. <laughs> 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 the uh, that that's insane. Yeah, that's insane. he was talking about like people what who it... had maybe been in prostitution and had been like you know tattooed by their pimps. But for for it to be the number one number one that was his, surgery, there yeah, must have been quite a few his, people done. And he was quite proud. You know, he had these special special lasers that you know were kind of a newer wow. technology at the time, and I was just blown. But he away. mentioned it was particularly women, not yes, men. Yes, he it was women, and he specifically said, you know, huh. a wow. lot of them had been in, you know that age old business and had been tattooed Jeez, in certain places. That's and, unreal. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I and wanted to uh, wouldn't have guessed that. I had start, a couple other funny ones in mind, but Wow. Mm -hmm. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. So interesting. How long after you arrived and everything else, did you did you date when you originally arrived in Korea or how did what was the what was the situation like that long ago? Um the dating scene now is very popular, very common. I think I saw four or five foreign women with Korean boyfriends at the Tulip Festival last right. weekend. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's very, very common now, or much more common. What was it like back then? Uh, I think I, I mean, I, I didn't set out to to start dating. I just happened <laughs> to, you know, um, be out one weekend, and I saw someone that caught my eye, and I had mentioned to a friend of mine, like, oh, you know. He looks like a pretty nice fella, and um, that that was Sophie Philip Philip Hall's wife. Yeah, so I've know. known her for years and years and years. Very nice lady. We both looked very different at the time. We met each other on that one night that I met my ex husband, yeah. and uh, she had you know said to him like, oh you know my friend you know. My friend would like to meet you, yeah. sort of thing. Did he speak English? And he didn't. He, oh, just a little bit. And so she had told him that one night, and Brave then the Stacey. next, the next night we were back at the same location, and uh, Jeff uh -oh. had uh, <laughs> Jeff had been called over by my ex husband and said like, "Who's that? You know, I want to meet her." And so we just kind of met. Wow. How long had you been here at that point? Um, this was January or February of ninety eight. So, so over a year. Just, so how was your Korean? At that oh no, time? no, just a few months, right? Just, oh my I got here God. in November, so right. How was your Korean? I didn't speak Korean. I, uh -huh. I, you know, hello. <laughs> really? Say. So I. That's Jeffy. Jeffy too. That's Jeffy got hitched yeah, yeah. six six months in too. He so, Jeffy got married six months in. Never mind. Uh, so hmm. yeah. So I had I had wow. met Jeff. He's one of the first people that I met. Yeah. You know, when I started going out and Any, out. anywhere you are you can just you know cup your ear and you can hear him speaking somewhere <laughs> <with that. laughs> right so cool. i mean i i didn't plan on you know dating i you know just kind of circumstances so at the time i mean there were a few other uh women that were dating korean men as well as you know foreign men dating korean women and you know sometimes it worked out and sometimes it didn't work out so and was it fairly taboo then for women to be dating Korean men? Or uh, I think um, just being out in public with a Korean man, I didn't have that kind of social stigma attached to me that fo uh, that foreign men had with the Korean dating women. Korean women. Uh -huh. I had a lot of friends who friends would tell me stories about like um, getting spit on. Um, in the public, like in pub, when mm. out in public with their Korean girlfriends, because you know the the women were seen as you know second class, sure. uh, kind of you know like you're a disgrace to your race, and like, <laughs> you know what are you doing with that white boy, and you know like sure because Americans every be damned. And, but what about right. I mean, even when my sister came the first time, mm -hmm. 
the taxi driver asked me where I found such a beautiful Russian girl, assuming oh. that she was a prostitute. <laughs> right, right, right. And I was ready to deck him. And I was, <laughs> right. I was shocked that he wouldn't just say, where are you from? Or is this your girlfriend? Or how do you know her? And he said, how did you find such a pretty Russian girl? Right. So, you, I mean, and you're fair, fair haired. I mean, you must have got some of those comments oh, back I, in the day. Oh, I got the, a, a lot of times. And what you would have is you'd have people like saying like, Russia? Russia? And I would say like, <laughs> no, Canada. And mm. as soon as you said mm. Canada, their face would change. Mm. They would be more, you know, friendly towards you. <laughs> that gleam in their eye, like that hopeful gleam in their eye would like, you oh. know, be diminished. But yeah, I mean, I remember traveling by taxi one day and it was summertime. It was hot. I had shorts on. I didn't have like, you know, short shorts on, but you know, I'm sitting in the back of the taxi and the taxi driver is, you know, he's just driving. He's got his arm like rested on the headrest of the passenger seat. Oh, no. And, you know, he just kind of casually like lets his hand down and starts trying to rub my leg while I'm in this yeah. taxi. And he's like, Russia, Russia. And I'm like, you know, calling him. By that time, I you know, I knew, you know, a few choice words. In yeah, Korean, you, so. you must have been pure and innocent then still. I thought you'd knock him out. And, you know, but I mean, this is... Well, you should have just pulled up the shorts and said, look at the name tattooed on my leg. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, you've... Um, I had another friend tell me the story that uh, her, um, you know, she she moved into this neighborhood and she went to the corner store. And the guy at the corner store, you know, had said to her, like, you, me, one room? You know, you, me, one room? <laughs> Glad all you that one training paid off. She, she was blonde and, you know, he assumed sure. that she was... Oh, I think it should be mentioned that, you know, at the time, if you were blonde and young and, right. you know, relatively, you know, not bad looking, you were assumed to be a Russian hooker. Sure. And, wow. you know, there were even, a lot of... Even until, I mean, even until probably 2006 or seven or eight, it was still very, very common to get those comments and questions and looks. People still do get those comments and questions. And, um, yeah, so it's... Um, when somebody asks you if you're Russian, they don't mean it as a compliment. And that's, you know, it's, exactly. it's, it's terrible, but hmm. um, that's basically the, the truth of it. Right. Interesting. Next. So, give her. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, focusing back on uh, on work, you, um, you're still working, you're still an English teacher, but uh, you have a side... Uh, a side, uh, a side business. A side gig. Yes, I would like to. <laughs> I would like to. Uh, I'd like to to pick your brain a little bit about that. About okay. uh, mama. Mm-hmm. About mama's binu and uh, in the markets. All right. So what, how did it? How did it start? How long have you been doing it? What are you? Uh, what are you into? Feel free to plug the plug the business. Okay. So. Hmm. So um, binu is Korean for soap, and I'm the mama. And I make the bino, I make the soap. So um, kind of started out as just a little hobby. My daughter and I would um, stop into the local uh, cultural centers and take different classes on, you know, um, glycerin soap making, or we took a class on how to make mosquito spray and then um, bubble bath and things like that. So we just had um, a couple classes and... You know, she enjoyed doing it, and I thought, okay, well, I know how to do this now, so I'm just going to buy the ingredients myself, and then we can do it at home. And so just slowly we started off making little soaps and things, and um, after my son was born, he was a bit of a, you know, chub of a baby. He was, um, you know, almost twice the size of his Korean counterparts when he was born, and he had a um, a bit of eczema or just... In the, in the folds of his skin, sure. you know, he would get red and raw sometimes. Yeah. And so I started to look for natural alternatives to, you know, steroid creams to help him with that. So started to make them. And you know. is Maya still heavily involved in it now or is it mostly just you? Uh, Maya, for a time, you know, she was so um, crazed about doing her own thing that she had her own little subsection of my mama's binu. Uh. And uh, her soaps were called Sweet as a Rose, uh, (laughs) since Rose is her middle name. And I made her her own little logo and she has her own logo and her own business cards. Cool. She still helps with things from time to time, but being a teenager, you know, it's mostly... um, my boy that helps out mom now. So actually, we have a date this afternoon to make uh, Easter soaps. So Easter's coming up. We'll make a few Easter soaps for this coming fair on Sunday. Right. And uh, thank you, dear. 
So, yeah, so he was a chubby little bub, and I'm a big label reader. And even though I do speak, read, write Korean, you know, when you're reading labels, it's just totally different. It's all scientific terminology. Sure. Mm. So I wanted to know what were what was in the products that I was going to be putting on his skin. So I just did a lot of research and reading online and just started um, coming up with different recipes. So, awesome. Yeah. And fairly easy to, to do and learn on your own or? Right. So, I mean, um, the good thing about, uh, you know, living in this generation now where we have, you know, internet, YouTube, we have yeah. YouTube, you have like online tutorials for things. You can buy eBooks, you know, if you didn't want to pay the shipping and handling for, you know, buying books and yeah. sending them all the way Paper here to Korea yeah. or even finding shippers ship uh people willing to ship to korea mm. you can order ebooks and stuff online mm. so i've got a bunch of ebooks and i have some you know actual books and you know just trial and error go through and make a couple different things so that's awesome yeah so when you know when you make something you know you make a batch of it so it's not necessarily a one um one pot right yeah um you know thing of lotion for example it's You're, not it's gonna be you know Maybe four or five pots. So it's not uh, not food either, which is which is nice. We've thought about getting into uh, into into the food production. I mean, for the markets right, or, right. or whatnot, mm -hmm. even small um, you know small batch food uh, food production. But that it can go bad so easy. You need to store right. it so, and I with mean, soap. That's a you got a great uh, great gig. Yeah. There. So I mean, a lot of a lot of things do have like a shelf life. So you want to use like the lotions is. You know, you don't want to, mm. you know, hoard them. They're made fresh. You want to use them yeah, right yeah. away. But, um, you know, there's no preservatives. You want to just try to keep things um, as fresh and germ-free as possible. But, yeah, soap. I mean, you make soap, you just... Bath bombs, and huge you, in my house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've yeah. been doing this for quite a while, and I assume you've built up a decent clientele. Is there any chance in the future of it becoming uh, a major... Uh, I think business you know, or a bigger I business a of, or I have a lot of people asking me that question, you know, and it, it's right now I work full time. I have two jobs. I'm raising two kids. I've got, you know, um, mouths to feed. So I have a steady income from my other two jobs. This kind of mama's Bino is like my side gig side thing that keeps me sane while at the same time, you know, I can earn a little bit of money to like pay for my kids academy fees you know? mm. so <laughs> kind of um, mm. i'd love to be able to do it full time but i think you know maybe if i was younger right. if i didn't have kids that you know uh needed to be <laughs> you know yeah. fed and clothed and housed Absolutely. that i might be more willing to you know kind of i think i, I think throw all caution time. to the wind and just do that full time mm. but you know, you kind of you need, but maybe, you need a backup. But maybe so. doing it, maybe doing it part time is what keeps it interesting and special and something to look forward to, sure. as if it was your, you know, if it was your full time gig. I think about that lots too. I'm I quitting we everything. Have things, I'm, you know that we wanna, you know, we wanna do. I'm absolutely. Like, oh, if I could do and this you thing. romanticize them right. quite a bit. If I could do this full time, you know, you know, what, you know, no great, you know. Do you know what mine is? What is yours? I tell my wife all the time. She laughs. I want to be a barber. Imagine barber. opening opening the barber shop. You go in, you cut some hair, you, you talk to people. That that's how I imagine it. Yeah. But in reality, you're probably sitting around, you know, for hours, hours on end, spending lots of time in there. Maybe no customers. Maybe you don't like your customers. Oh, yeah. I always said I'd love to love to work at an airport bar, airport lounge, in a big airport. Ooh. People coming and going. Always a lot of really. Always I never meeting interesting people. No, guy for ten I years just, never said that. I love <laughs> I love to travel. I love the stories and I love to talk and. I mean, you meet all kinds of characters in an airport mm -hmm. coming and going and guys who are late, missed their flights, delayed, <laughs> you know, all kinds of walks of life, all it's kinds of people. Very specific, you Double. know, an airport bar. An <laughs> airport bar. <laughs> well, I think you that's a great place to just I've hang out and talk with people. Bar. You see, uh, <laughs> I've never drank in an airport. But I have friends all the time that are posting, oh, just in whatever airport, stop in for a beer before I leave or... Or a beer before I go, sure. or one last beer in Germany, or so. Yeah, I always, I always thought that'd be a fun place to to hang out, thirty dollars parking, meet lots of interesting eight dollar beer. <laughs> it was worth uh, just it, the man. going and coming people, man. Absolutely, always yeah. lots of cool stories. I always think if you're going somewhere or coming, you must have something to talk about because That's you're it. you're either leaving somewhere or going somewhere, and you you did something. So, right. um, I like it. Anyways, I like it. I you like mentioned it. interesting, hard raising two kids. Um, I, I can't imagine, I find it hard with, with two of us raising two kids. So mm -hmm. I can't imagine how difficult it must be on your own. Um, 
I do have grandma, do though. I have grandma. I have super grandma. Grammy. <laughs> Grammy kicks in. I have this Grandma's, super, super, super grandma. Our grandma or my children's grandma made this possible today. So shout out to Harmony. <laughs> <laughs> right. Harmonies are the, are the best. No, I mean, um, grandma, grandma is, so grandma's my, uh, my mother-in-law, I guess my former mother-in-law. Since technically, you know, she's not my mother-in-law anymore uh, since I'm not married. But uh, <laughs> she's she's still my mother-in-law. I call her grandma because she's my kid's grandma. Right. And um, it's just easier than saying mother-in-law. No doubt. You know? So grandma, you know, she's been there every step of the way. You know, I did get divorced when Tay was just turning about... He was just turning two. It was just before his second birthday when we separated. And then it takes a couple months for the divorce to be finalized, finalized here. So that was, I guess it must be about eight years now since Tay's going to be turning 10. Jeez. And yeah, I mean, it's, it's funny because usually Korean, um, you know, culture, societal norms don't really see this kind of relationship as being, you know. Um, a a daughter-in-law, mother-in-law, yeah, that's the... I mean, daughter-in-law, ex-mother-in-law. I mean, you'd normally, if you were getting divorced in Korea, you wouldn't see like that other side of the family again. I, listen, I don't think the like, daughter-in-law wants know. to see the mother-in-law at no, all, I mean, even when they're married. Right. Okay. <laughs> and if anything, most of the mother-in-laws take their son's side right. and, and they side with the son and, right. and you're the evil, the evil uh, daughter-in-law. That's true. I mean, that's usually the way it is. And, you know, usually when families are, you know, um, are divorcing or separating, you know, it's just kind of cut and dry. Like you don't see each other anymore. You don't really hear hmm. of too many cases of like joint custody or things like that. Hmm. You know, I mean, at home in Canada, you have lots of different, you know, blended families. Absolutely. Got, Brady you know, Bunch. Yeah. I mean, you have, it, it's ingrained in our culture that, you know, that, I mean, you still have cases like where, you know, people don't see each other again. Hmm. But, um, yeah, so grandma is um, she's still with us. She lives just down the street. I live on one side of the kids' school. She lives on the other side of the school. Beautiful. She comes to the house every day to, you know, um, take care of the house and the kids while I go to work. And, you know, I don't think I could do it without her. I mean, I do still do yeah. laundry and I do clean my own house. Yeah. But mostly it's it's grandma who, takes, who yeah. does it all. Right. That's so awesome. So it's like I'm the... You know, I'm the husband and she's the wife. You know, I go out and I make the money yeah. and, uh, you know, keep the family fed I and think, housed yeah. and grandma takes care of everything else. So that's we're, a, that's, we're very lucky. That's a win-win too because right. I think it, it it provides her with some purpose in, in life as well right, and, and because, something um, to wake up in the morning to... Sure. Grandma, grandma came to live with us um, just before Maya was born. Mm. Grandpa, unfortunately, um, he had cancer. He ended up... Um, really, really going downhill fast. Be by the time we found out that he was actually sick with cancer, mm. he was already, you know, on his deathbed. So right. mm. grandma and grandpa had never, um, you know, wanted or, or felt compelled to come and live with their, their kids. Mm. They always told us, um, since my ex-husband is the only son, he has an older sister. It oh. would be, you know, his responsibility to take care of his parents. And um, they always told us, like, you live your life, you know, like, we, we don't want to, you know, come and live with you. We don't have any plans for that. You guys just, you know, mm. enjoy, enjoy your life sort of thing. And, um, yeah, but then circumstances be what they were. Mm. Uh, Grandpa passed away just before Maya was born. So Grandma really didn't have a lot of time to grieve, or none of us really did. No. Because, you know, two weeks later, a little bit more than two weeks later, you know, the new baby was coming. Wow. So... Um, so grandma came to, I, I spent a month living with her in Pusan mm. and, um, she helped me take care of Maya when she was a newborn. Mm. And then we packed up her house and her life in Pusan and brought her to Ulsan to live with us. Mm. So she came to live with us and, um, you know, so she helped me every step of the way, like raising a newborn oh. in this foreign country. I don't know. Right? They always say it takes a village to raise a, to raise a kid. And I don't know how... If it was just me and Julia or me, mm -hmm. I don't know how I could, well, without like even the grandma say, oh, why don't you do it like this? Bath him like that. This mm -hmm. is a good idea from experience. Oh my God, I couldn't, couldn't imagine. Right. So yeah. I had grandma every step of the way. And, um, you know, people ask me like, oh, how did you learn to speak Korean so well? And it's really because of that month yeah. that I had to live with her <laughs> all in, day, in day, Busan yeah. all day, every day with a yeah. newborn baby. Didn't go out, didn't go anywhere. Yeah. And uh, my ex-husband at the time, he was 
Um, his office was out of China, so he wasn't even in country at the time. He was, um, his father had passed away, so he's just kind of trying to tie up loose ends in China before moving back to Korea. So、mm. I was alone, like literally,、yeah. <laughs> grandma and I in Pusan with the <laughs> newborn. Dun, dun, dun. You know, I had to learn Korean really quick.、Yeah. And this is really even before we had smartphones to. You know, look up things. You, I had a little paper dictionary. Grandma, type this into Papa Go. So, um, you know, uh, you just kind of listen and repeat, listen and repeat, and、mm. you say something enough times, you're, you know, hopefully going to understand. <laughs> and so, Grandma, and I have a, we、Hajima. speak a unique language. You know, I don't really have to、sure. um, do the formal speech with her. I mean, she understands if I lots of John Sody over here the, too. The pan mal, you、yeah. know, the, the the lower lower two、yeah. <laughs> speech.、Um, <laughs> Yeah, so Grandma came to live with us, and she still lived with us up until we got divorced.、Um, you know, I told her at the time, you know, you didn't do anything wrong. You don't have to move out.、Um, she felt compelled to move out because my sister-in-law was kind of pressuring her. You know,、yeah. you're not,、um, you know, you're not Stacy's responsibility anymore. You know, they're、mm. very Koreanized in their thinking. So she she didn't mean anything bad by it. She just didn't want you know me to feel like you know older sisters.、Um, yeah. Right, like responsible to、yep. have to take care of grandma anymore.、Mm. So grandma,、um, she did move out a couple months after we got divorced, and it was only really、um, she had never lived on her own either.、Mm. She went from、um, husband, right,、mm. um, straight out of high school, going to work in a company, you know, getting married, having kids. So she had never、mm. been on her own, and you know, this is the first chance that she actually had to have her own apartment.、Mm. So she thought it would be、um, better. Because we have to do the ancestral rights and things like that in Korea, where yeah, yeah.、Um, yeah. my ex-husband, as the head of household, he would have to conduct the ceremonies yeah, you know, yeah. for the different holidays. Yeah, yeah. So she didn't want it to be uncomfortable, you know, if he had to like come to our house to do that.、Mm. So I mean, this is before we we really, you know, talked about like how things are going to go down.、Mm. So. Um, you know, we don't have any problems being in the same room t- with each other. We've never、yeah. been alone since we've gotten divorced. But、yeah. he comes over to pick up the kids, and you know, when they're going to grandma's house for the different、uh, ceremonies, and you know, it's it's just oh, dad's here. You know, come cool. Like, taking you to grandma's house.、Mm. So grandma just you know、um, wanted it to not be an issue. So、yeah. she thought if she moved out. You know, then there wouldn't be a problem.、No. So, as much as I assured her that there wouldn't be a problem anyway, even if she did stay, you know, she just thought, okay, maybe I should move out.、Uh-huh. So, Grandma's happy having her own little place, and you know, she's still that's a happy medium. Yeah, she still sounds like like she's way ahead of her time. Right.、Um, mm-hmm. I <laughs> I can't imagine what the majority of the divorces and stuff are like in the country, but I'm sure they're not anything like that. No, and I mean, her and Grandpa initially were, you know, opposed to us getting married in the first place, simply because I was a foreigner. Right. And once they met me, you know, they changed their tune, so they allowed it.、Um, and yeah, I mean, which I, I think, think is pretty common even this these days. I mean, I, I've right, been married I mean, eight have, or nine years, but、right. still, the guys getting married these days have the same issues.、Mm-hmm. Um, and, and the women, the foreign women marrying Korean men, lots of them still have similar issues. Right. And and once you're in the family and. They can trust you and believe you, and it's not just this thing anymore.、Right. I think you you can develop that relationship a little better.、Mm. Sure. So it's you know it's it's never been easy, but I think in my case I just lucked out in the、uh, in laws department. So yeah,、um, cool. So I've never really had any any problems like that with grandma. So grandma and I understand each other. She's.、Um, She's got a lot of、uh, foreign ideas, you know, in her head. She's not. She's not so Korean anymore after having me as a daughter-in-law. We gotta open a store. We'll sell hamburgers. Have you? I mean, a pretty unique situation. Have、right. you ever been approached about TV shows or documentaries or movies or anything? Or、uh, a lot of times,、um, I have had different.、Um, <laughs> a girl on the bus. The,、uh, <laughs> different proposals for things like that. Grandma always like opts out because she doesn't want to,、um, you know. Uh, flaunt that you know we're divorced.、Mm. So、um, there was、um, a TV program that had approached us. They wanted to you know talk to my brother and his wife as well, and we kind of all just agreed that you know maybe some of our stories we didn't want to like really put out there because、right. there's、we're、always got to save them for this podcast. I mean, they always <laughs> but they they put a spin. You know how these TV、Absolutely. shows always. they always try to、yeah. you know make problems where there sure, aren't any problems,、sure. and they try to spin things in. But that's why I wonder if you've gotten anything.、Right. More serious, maybe.、Uh, I don't mean those because those are. Right, I, right, right. I mean, we've also been asked to do a couple of those,、mm-hmm. and I, 
at first I thought it would be good for, you know, for me, for work, for mm-hmm. the NGO, for right. this. But once I talked to my wife and my mother-in-law about it, and their and sister in law, hundred percent no. Oh, it never seen, turns out we've good. We've seen right, a couple. Right, right. And now that I've been able to see some friends on them, I would never ever do one of those. Right. Mm-hmm. But I mean, maybe something more serious or professional, maybe where right. because it, it is very unique and I think it's a really interesting story. Well, it's just mm-hmm. different. I did have, I did do a show once. It was kind of like um, for a while back before I had kids. There was a TV program. It was called, I think it was called Atsumul Yonda. So it's like Good Morning Ulsan, something like that. Mm. And every once in a while, they'd call me and I'd do different little pieces for them. Mm. And one of them was like a day in the life of Stacy. And so they followed <laughs> me around. This is when I was working at Ulsan University. So they followed me to my classes. They followed me home, interviewed my friends, you know, and interviewed my students and kind of like, this is what Stacy's life is like in Korea. And, you know, but I don't think... This is Stacy's yeah, life on that, the weekend. Tombs, <laughs> it would not go over tombstone. well, you know, it would not go over well. <laughs> Um, these days, the way they would spin it with like you know me no and doubt. grandma and two kids, right? right. Okay, um, <clears throat> again, raising uh, raising kids in a in a bilingual household, uh, we have debates uh, amongst our friends if it's um, if you should speak Korean and English in the house, only right. English in the mm-hmm. house, let them get Korean from outside, or mm-hmm. what what happens in your house? Um, so I think um, you know, with us, we do speak mostly. Um, English when I'm talking to the kids mm. but if grandma's around I do find myself speaking Korean to them as well if it's mm. part of a conversation that I think grandma should know oh okay you know? okay so if I'm telling the kids like you know um so what you're really saying like is you want to keep secrets from grandma in English well grandma, grandma <laughs> picks up on quite a bit you know grandma picks up on quite a bit she's lived with us for a long time but we don't want to exclude grandma in any of our conversations so yeah. unless I'm specifically having a conversation in English with the kids yeah. if it's something that I think that she should you know, know no, yeah. that I'm talking about. I'll cool. speak a little bit of Korean as well. But, you know, the kids get enough Korean from grandma and from just living here in general cool, yeah, yeah. that, you know, I was worried that they wouldn't speak English when they were young. Mm. So we did have Disney Channel. Maya watched a lot of Disney Channel when she was younger. Yeah. Um, when Disney Channel was, I think it was broadcast out of Singapore, maybe. Mm. And so all the programming was in English. Yeah. And but you know now we have Disney Channel Korea, so it's all in Korean. But the kids do watch YouTube and things like yeah. that. So. Um, Tay's vocabulary has expanded since he watches different, um, you know, programs on YouTube. So, yeah, I think that situation, I mean, I find when I'm at the in-laws house right. that I speak Korean a lot because it's, it's just easier than being bugged. What did he say? What did he say? And grandma right. asking the kids all mm-hmm. the time, what did your dad say? Tell me what your dad said. What did you? It's just, so and even if it's something it. simple, not right. even if it's an important conversation, but even if it's just, you know, go get your pajamas, let's put them on and brush your teeth. What did he say? What did he say? Right. You want to include them in, in on the conversation. And, and right. it's just much easier to just do that stuff in Korean mm-hmm. and then they don't feel like they're excluded or you're telling something secret or... <laughs> right, right, right. Because and she think, asks every time. And, and does it, she still ask? And when the uncles are around <laughs> and... And other people and they always, everyone's, they just think that just me and my kids and maybe my wife can understand. So right. they think, you know, it's this secretive uh, conversation, which it's not. It's She'll say, dad told me to go put my shoes on. And he goes, oh, that right, wasn't right. very so important. That wasn't, that wasn't very exciting. So, right. <laughs> so I also find myself speaking Korean when I'm at the in-laws mm-hmm. to try and make it easier for everyone. Right. And then I'll speak a lot. I'll speak more Korean when we're if we're out with like their Korean cousins. So if we're with the Korean cousins who do speak English, you know, then I will still, you know, speak a little bit of Korean just so that they, you know, feel um, included. Right. And, you know, grandma picks up on a lot of things, too. So um, and, and the way, you know, since we lived together, um, she she knows that if I'm speaking Korean to the kids, it's not because I'm trying to exclude her on something. Right. You know, she, she's she's not offended if I speak English to the kids. Sure. So um, whereas, you know, other people who, you know, maybe you haven't um, spoken that much Korean around them before, sure. they might all of a sudden think like, oh, you know, something secretive is going on. They're speaking English. So, But I do like going to Canada and then speak to the kids in Korean because everyone else oh, is doing it with English. <laughs> I've I, done that too, you know. I don't. And, uh, I speak uh, most of my Korean in Canada. Right, right, right. Just it's, it's funny because then my, you know, my family gets these like blank looks on their faces like, you know, I have no idea what you said and I'm like, oh, you know, sorry. You know, totally, just, go get her shoes. You know, <laughs> different, different things like that, you know, like, um, you know, yeah, telling off the kids in Korean like, you know, you better sit down. Sure. You know, yeah. 
with a know, smile. Right, with a smile, like nobody knows. <laughs> nobody knows <laughs> okay, fantastic. Let's get into the... Well, I just yeah, um, we know your son is ten. Your daughter is. Two, she okay. 14. So Tay is going on ten. His birthday is in August. Yeah. He'll be ten. But, you know, he'll remind you that he's 11 in Korean. Yeah. So, you know, um, and Maya is 15 in Korean, uh, but she's 13 going on 14. 13 going so, on 14. Right, 13 going on 14. So, you know, you know how it works in Korea. You sure. um, you get a year older every year. Everybody at the beginning of the year gets a year older. Yeah. Um, you're adding a plus one year um, to cover the, the 10 months that you were in womb. Mm. So everybody is usually... A year older. If your birthday hasn't passed yet, you are two years older. So Maya's birthday is next month. So she's still 13 in my book um, right. until the birthday passes and she's 14. But she will be damned if uh, she lets you call her, <laughs> if you let her, if she lets you call her 13. 13. She's so, 15. So what is you know, it like Korean. having having a teenager in the house? Um, it's definitely different. I mean, she's, uh, she's almost caught up to me height-wise. She's definitely, um, you know, head and shoulders above grandma at this point. She is moody as most teenagers are, but she's getting better. I think she's transitioning through that uh, um, phase. That, that phase. So she's kind of getting um, getting over that. She's absolutely mortified when she comes across <laughs> Uncle Nate on the street. <laughs> He's like, hi, 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 hi. And she's like, Mom, I think he's stalking me. And I'm like, no, he's not stalking you. I was like, all you have to do is say hello. And then it's the end of conversation. She's like, no, he's going to ask me stuff. And I'm like, well, if he asks you stuff, you just answer. But I think that's part of um, what she does is she generally tries to blend in. She of tries course. to hide when she's in public. So if I get a phone call from her and she's only speaking Korean to me, I know she's like probably standing friends. at the bus stop or she's waiting somewhere. <laughs> she doesn't want to draw attention to herself. I, I agree. So, I, think a lot, I think a lot of us do that. Right. Huh? Right. So I even do that with the kids sometimes. Just I don't need everybody staring and watching me and... Right, you I know? mean, so I know when she's standing at the bus stop. How do you pretend to be Korean? <laughs> but if you're <laughs> at the mean, playground and you're yelling in English or you're talking to them in English, everybody stops and freezes right, and watches right, right, you. Right. If you just say, Gina, we're going in 10 minutes or 5 minutes, get ready, then nobody even looks. They don't even oh, think, okay, oh, maybe right, that right. was a foreigner. Oh, as soon okay, as you say right. English, the whole playground stops and watches you. Oh, right, right. Okay, okay. So she does that in public. So, um, I mean, <laughs> Otherwise, I don't fit in as a Korean. <laughs> <laughs> she still speaks Korean to mom. Yeah, she, she, Sorry, she still... She still speaks English to mom, but mostly when she's calling and she's speaking Korean, mm. I know she's with her Korean friends. And I mean, they all know she speaks English, but there's got to be some, she's in public somewhere where she doesn't want, you know, people to, mm. you know, if she starts speaking English, all heads are going to turn and look at her. Sure, no so she doesn't, you know, want that no attention. Doubt. She's definitely getting smarter because now when she sees my car, sometimes when I'm pulling up by work, I can see her up ahead and I'm getting ready to roll down my window and say, hey, Maya. <laughs> and she, she sees me first and she goes... Let's go, let's go. And they just run away before I can even say hi to them. <laughs> if I can, uh, if I can cut it here, okay. um, I would like to do the did you, I would like to, sorry, I'd like to do, I'd like to butcher the did you know section again. Okay, did you um, know? <clears throat> did you know that, uh, have you heard of the Hwarang? This is like the Korean history moment here. Are you familiar with the Hwarang? Uh, ha, rang. Ha, rang. Uh, do you know? I don't know. It's, what this I'm going to read this. I don't either. I'm going to butcher this straight from Wikipedia. Okay. <clears throat> Oh, I'm ready to go. Huarang, also known as the Flowering Knights, were an elite warrior group of male youth in Shila, uh, an ancient kingdom of the Korean peninsula that lasted until the 10th century. There, uh, there were educational institutions as well uh, as social clubs where members gathered for all aspects of study, originally for arts and culture, as well as religious teachings stemming mainly from Korean Buddhism. Chinese sources referred only to the physical beauty of the flowering youths, Originally, the Huarang, Huarang were known for their use of makeup and cosmetic decorations and accessories. So, um, these guys, they were kind of like the, the warrior group, I think, that, um, or that the Chinese, uh, liter the historians referred to them, um, not only for their fighting abilities, but for their, for their use of, of makeup and, and beautiful, uh, beautiful looks. So I wanted to tie it. No, I, I wanted to. That. I wanted to tie this into to raising um, uh, a, a daughter who's getting into her uh, into her teens now. I know at home. I mean, when I was younger, some girls weren't allowed to wear makeup. Right. 
Um, some had strict restrictions, you know, in high school, you can do it. There were some girls in grade five who had full, who'd come to school with full makeup. Wow, what's five. the, what's the, uh, what's the rule or what's the, the common, uh, common thing now for, for young Korean girls? Uh, I mean, so grandma always gets after Maya when she puts on makeup because grandma's like, you know, everybody, you know, people on the street are going to think you're like a harlot or, you know, something, yeah. you know, because she has a little <laughs> bit of eyeliner on, right? So... Um, so she's got this pack, like a BB cream, a kind of, um, uh, like it's a, it's a sunscreen that she has that she puts on and it makes her face look even whiter than she already is. Oh, yeah, yeah. And she does do a little bit of eyeliner and a little bit of lipstick only when it's the weekend. I was going to say, is that allowed in school? No, you're not allowed in school. Ah, interesting. But, is but I see, in school. But right. I see the girl. I mean, unless they do it on their way out every day, mm-hmm. when you see the girls walking around town, right? They do it after all, school. They're mm-hmm. all covered in makeup. They do it after school. And so huh. I'm you know, thinking back to when I was in junior high, um, Maya's age. I think at the time, um, you know, a dark, smoky eye was really popular. I used to wear green eyeliner to mm. highlight my green eyes. So mm. I would have green eyeliner. We really didn't wear foundation, I don't really remember, but like maybe lipstick. So, um, but definitely not like the kids today back home. I mean, you know, I've got my cousin's daughters and they've got all the, their eyebrows are all done and they're, you know, they've got all this full face of makeup and, you know, contouring and shading and all these different yeah. things. Maya's allowed to have a little bit of something. Okay. If she has, like, a concealer, if she has a pimple, she puts on a little bit of concealer. She has eyeliner and then maybe a little bit of eyeshadow, but she definitely doesn't have, like, a full face of makeup. Even when she does have a little bit of makeup, she catches flack from Grandma all the time. Like, you know, <laughs> nice. Because, grandma uh, keeping her in life. You know, Grandma's very <laughs> traditional that way. Yeah, like, yeah. You know, don't let people, you know, you don't. Try to look older than you are. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not so thing. worried about Maya, but I'm a little concerned for Tay. Right. Korea being the number one consumer of male cosmetics in the world. Mm. Right. Um, mm-hmm. Do you, I mean, I've watched so many mothers with creams and lotions and potions on their kids. And mm-hmm. I, I mean, my wife does it if she baths the kids, but usually I do. And I don't put any creams or lotions on them. And I don't think they have any problems. Mm-hmm. But I see all through the stages of, of raising these kids and the moms are so overprotective and all the creams and lotions and and now you see it in university kids and I mean they're putting concealer on and, and cover up and stuff to I think hide. the main one of the one of the main things is that, you know, um Koreans have a lot more melanin than we do it as as white people, mm. you know. And so they do get a lot of um uh what they call the gimi or the the, the dark um sunspots. And so a lot of times, you know, what the parents are putting on the kids is, you know, lotion plus sunscreen. So mm. sunscreen, sunscreen is a really big thing here. Right. Yeah. For, um, My wife wears sunscreen every day. Right, for every, everybody. Because <laughs> she, she doesn't want to get, you know, the, the, sun the sunspots. Right. What? So it's a big thing. She says she gets freckles. Right. So, yeah. but then those could be, you know, cancerous later on, especially on their face. So I thought for a lot of these things, they right. just changed the name. Lipsticks suddenly started becoming called lip gloss. The uh, girls no. aren't allowed to wear lipstick, but they are allowed to wear lip gloss because oh, they have chapped lips. And now lip gloss has right. sparkles and right. comes in red. Oh, it used to be lip, only clear, right? Lip tint. Lip tint was the big thing for a while. Too. <laughs> lip tint? Lip tint. Um, so Maya now, spends more on makeup than I do. Like, I, I don't wear makeup at all. I, you know, you. I do I do wear sunscreen, but I make it myself. And, you know, so... What, how, what do you make sunscreen? Um, zinc. Zinc powder. Really? Zinc oxide. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No yeah. eggs? No eggs. No, no, what did you think you need eggs? <laughs> eggs. So anyway, yeah. I So, I mean, as far as I always put sunscreen on the kids. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I don't I don't know if Tay will be that kind of girly, you know, girly kind of Korean boy. Um, you know, I have. But that pure, but, that pure face, that the K-pop face where ever, there's no, not a blemish on your skin. Yeah, it's very, very popular. I have, uh, I have a, a student now who's who works at um who works at i don't know the name of it it's in the department story it's one of the cosmetic brands brands. Mm -hmm. he's genuinely passionate about cosmetics Mm -hmm. male female like he he has a a deep interest in explain like in this cream but it has this and it has that like i think think lots of them know Mm -hmm. i mean i think lots of them are educated on it um 
Yeah, it's very, very popular. Times are changing, right? Yeah, and yeah, Korea is pretty, pretty innovative as well with uh, with some of their products. At home, the the girls are doing the uh, what would you call? We slice the cucumber, put that on your face. Cucumbers? Don't yeah. you slice cucumbers and packs? Yeah, I guess, I guess cucumbers. You never seen that picture, like a girl laying down with the cucumbers on her eyes? Sure, yeah. sure, sure. Yeah. What's the? I, I've seen in Korea. I've seen the snail. Snail. Oh, you can get snail, snail, snail serum. You can get all kinds of different serums. They have all different kinds of face packs too. Korean face packs are like really popular around the world. Have you right? heard of the penis facial? And I'm oh, not. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah. No, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sandra Bullock is. I had one last week. <laughs> Sandra Bullock talks about it all the time, right? Yes. She yeah, was, she does. She's, 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 she's a big. She's one of the big. Um, right. Advocates for it. But what I think they don't really understand, though, is that she she's um, from one interview with her where she's talking about it i remember her saying something about they take the foreskin from a um, newly <laughs> circumcised baby right. Jesus. And, exactly. and turn it into some kind of serum right he's put in a blender but what she doesn't really realize is that you know <laughs> these aren't babes these aren't babies that this foreskin is coming from usually young boys here are circumcised when they're oh and they're grade seven, six eight, five, nine, grade ten, six yeah. right? grade five or six. Oh, good lord so, so they're getting the or even stones. older too so you know it's not as innocent you know as she she seems <laughs> To think it is. Good lord. Maybe we got to invite her over here for a for a tour and of I Korea. Open, I, I, I open her. I can't. <laughs> I've brought that up in some adult classes, and I just I can't keep a straight face asking it. But I haven't heard of it here. I've only heard of you know from celebrities abroad, yeah. talking about you know Korean you know this Korean penis you know. Facial, facial sort of thing, right? Who's collecting these things? I have no idea. <laughs> I'd like to see the guy's resume. <laughs> oh, good lord, that's uh. That, we, that that got posted on one of our uh, one of the Facebook sites that we're on, and it just obviously it's a very shocking title, you know. Sandra Bullock endorses penis facials. Like, right, oh, right. this is this has got to be good, but that's a real product. Interesting. Imagine the marketing team. I, it markets itself. Never mind. Well, you just need one or two celebrities that you know. There's always somebody willing some, to try. Some right? Nice results. You couldn't right? do the. <laughs> The fountain of youth. <laughs> the penis. Oh man, you wouldn't want to be rubbing. Uh, nah, never mind. I'm gonna. I'll cut myself off. Uh, cut myself off there. Um, mum, 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 mum. Let's. We're getting short on time here. Why don't we? Why don't we wrap it up? Oh yeah, hold on, Stacy. Any? Uh, oh, I wanted to ask about the witches. Maybe, maybe next time. Yeah, maybe next time we're in, we can get the oh, get the full scoop on the uh, right. get the full scoop on. Uh, on I also wanted to ask about being in country with your brother. And having a sibling in country must be also interesting. Uh, yeah, and he did. But. He lived here for a year when I was maybe in the early two thousands. It was before World Cup, early two thousands. He was here for a year, hmm. and he liked it, you know. But he went. He went back home. He only stayed for a year. And then when I took Maya to meet um, our Canadian family for the first time, she had just turned a year old. We went home that summer, and he came back with us. Hmm. So he's been back here in Korea since Maya was a year old. And she's turning 14, so yeah. it's been quite a while. He got married a few years ago. Mm. Um, after mom passed away, he um, he came back, but he's 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 living in Incheon now. Mm. So he was with us in the same city for all that time, yeah. and then now you know now that he's back, he's living with his wife in Incheon. Uh-huh. So we don't see him as often, but yeah, I mean, um, it definitely makes it easier to live here sure. as long as I mm. have. So this year is my First. my half anniversary. I don't know how to explain this. So I came to Korea. <laughs> I came to Korea when I was twenty two, yeah. and I'll be turning forty four. Uh-huh. So I've spent officially wow. half my life in yeah. Canada and half Have my you. life here. So it's kind of you came twenty uh, two. I came at twenty two. Yeah, as well. I mean, just really awesome. Really weird. I'll I, tell you, I haven't really wrapped my head the around With the penis facial cream. Right, you don't, right, you right. don't look a day over 43. <laughs> <laughs> People always ask me, like, you know, oh, um, you know, you've been here so long. You're, you're Korean now. And I'm like, well, I'm not exactly Korean now. But yeah. it's, you know... After next year, the scales are, you know, are Well, lots of people yeah. ask, right. when are you going home? When, when do you think? When's a good time to go? But the same thing. I, I lived in Thunder Bay for maybe 15 years, 14 mm-hmm. years. And... That's it. Now I've been in Ulsan longer than any other city Nate, I've call, ever lived in. So. Call, it, call it what it is. It's, it's the city that killed Terry Fox. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. It, it's, it's very similar. I don't. I consider this my home. Right. Going back to Canada doesn't feel like home to me. I don't. My friends are all over. My family's all over. So this is my home. And it's hard yeah. for Koreans to understand or appreciate that 
You know, this is where I live most of my life. You got to define. It's definitely different. Different Define home, man. Right. So same thing with me. You know, people ask me, like, are you going to go back home? And, you know, now that, like, my mom is gone, my grandmother is gone, you know, I have aunts, uncles, cousins, but it just doesn't seem like if there was a time that I would consider going home, it would be because, you know, like, you know, I've got to be with my mom or Mm. I'm going to help take care of my grandmother or something. But, you know, it's just... This is life. Yeah, you know, life is just... You know, what turned out, um, you know, see a mom, I'm going to Korea for a year, kind of, uh, you know. <laughs> That's what I did. It's um, been 12. <laughs> right. It's it's kind of, you know, and years just pass, like in the blink of an eye. Like, mm. I didn't expect to be living here as long as I have. I didn't mm. expect to get married and have two kids. Um, but that's just the way, you know. And there's always out. more more reasons that come up to stay here than there are to right. go home. Yeah. So, you know, the daughter, I mean, I think Tay's at the age where he could, you know, he could potentially enjoy, like, you know, being being back home and, mm. and everything it has to offer. Maya, on the other hand, you know, she's she's older. She's a city kid. You know, we go back home to Canada and she's just kind of like... There's deer in the backyard. There's nothing to do here, you know? Like, there's nothing to do. I mean, right. everything shuts down at 5 o'clock, you know? Wow. We can't just... Um, you know, I found that so you're hungry, weird. Yeah. You can't just order out on a whim, you know. Yeah. Well, you, well, you can, but you can't. You don't have. The, it takes more than seven minutes. The right. guy's not cooking on right, the first right, floor right. of your apartment, and that's the reverse culture shock we all get going home. We're right. so I mean, used to this used lifestyle. To things, that... right? I mean, I just remember going to the bank with my mom when we were um, we had bank banking business to do, and they were like, "Oh, come back next week. We'll make an appointment." And I'm thinking, like, you can't do it right now. Like, why do we have to like <laughs> make right. an appointment and come back next week? It's right. just we're used to this bali bali, like things done fast here. I remember getting some uh, it's just <laughs> getting some trees trimmed in my in my house at home, and they they said, "Oh, okay. How are you going to pay for the you know pay cash or whatever, and just come down and give it to us?" I was like. Man, just give me your account. I'll, I'll transfer right, it over. Right, right. I'm like, what do you mean transfer? And this is three, four years ago. I'm mm-hmm. like, man, I'll just give me your bank account and I'll, I'll email you the money or figure it out online. Mm-hmm. Don't make me drive across the city. Oh, we don't do that here. I'm like, oh, come on. Just you know, <laughs> really, yeah. Like things like you're in the dark ages when you go back home sometimes. <laughs> no, <laughs> so, no. In just, some ways. Things it, were so slow. And that, but I wonder if, I mean, talking to, to Troy when he was here, he, uh, he was saying it's not it's not the Canada that we grew up in. It's uh you know it it has uh, evolved. Know. Yeah, it's evolved. But we spent a lot of time outside and whatnot. And I think it's the same as here. A lot of kids are or have their noses in their phones all day and and whatnot. But anyways, like uh, we're getting the getting the red light here today, so we got to uh, we got to wrap this up. But we'd love to have you uh, have you back to uh to discuss to discuss some more there's lots of uh lots of things maybe even get your brother in here i want to hear about his what's his haircut thing he gets a haircut in every country oh yeah is he writing a book he likes to travel that's unreal they travel a lot he likes to get a cut and a shave in uh, every country he goes to don't worry when i always documents the experiment uh, the experience yeah when uh when i open the barbershop we'll have a new car Oh yeah! yeah oh, he's, he's always in the yeah, fancy yeah, car here he before. Just put a down payment on a brand new Lexus. Come on! 2019 what a, SUV oh. hybrid. What kind of what kind of oh. gigs has oh, yeah, he got up there? <laughs> that's all I know. So he's that's pretty awesome. he's pretty happy about that. So good for him. Good for him. He'll be down soon, I'm sure. So listen, next time uh, next time we have you in here, we need uh, we're gonna need a sauna a sauna story from you. A sauna story. A sauna okay. story. So you get that uh, you get that ready. And uh, everyone, thanks for uh, thanks for listening. We'll uh, we'll check in again soon. Goodbye.